mysterious planet team are in Miami and are about to conduct an in-depth scientific investigation into one of the greatest mysteries of them all, the Bermuda Triangle. You know, we just got to keep moving and it's the key. Personally, of all the mysteries we've done, this is the one I really want to um, put to bed. They want to find out whether a three-sided geometrically shaped piece of water can really be responsible for the mysterious disappearance of thousands of ships, aircraft, and people. In the last 50 years alone, many believe it has claimed more than 900 boats, 150 planes, and a jet ski, leaving no bodies and no explanations. All kinds of stuff has happened to us out there. Fog visibility problems, electrical, weird things in the water, splashes, you don't see things, unbelievable. 1945 saw the most infamous incident of them all, Flight 19. Five Navy bombers on a routine training exercise took off from Fort Lauderdale base on a perfectly sunny day. The pilots later reported instrumentation anomalies, a mysterious strange fog enveloping the plane. A brief mayday distress call is heard, then silence. The planes and pilots of Flight 19 were never seen again. Flight 19, I want to find those planes. Find those planes. That's the smoking gun, okay? And later, by using science and technology tried and tested at Loch Ness, Egypt, and Roswell, they will examine the many triangle theories. Lee has handpicked an elite team for the land-based investigation, and joining him on the water will be marine biologist and triangle expert Sam Marshall. It's very dangerous. With the triangle going to suck you down. Okay. We're going to go back here and go back here. This way. We're not going in the triangle. No, no. So on day two, do we go into the triangle? Yes. We day do. two, yeah. We got to go inside. Uh, day two, we take the jet skis. With the jet skis? Yes, with the jet skis. We're pretty much loaded up, ready to go. Exactly. The necessary preparations have been made, and now it's the moment of truth. This will be Mysterious Planet's final and most important investigation of the series. A culmination of two years' work, it's time to get out onto the water and venture into the triangle itself. The team leave Miami and head east toward Bimini Island. As far as we know, that was the last footage ever shot of Lee Hart and his mysterious planet crew. Shockingly, they disappeared 10 days ago along with their Miami crew and their chartered boat the Sequos too. So what happened? Have they become yet another statistic? Victims perhaps the very thing they were investigating, the Bermuda Triangle. My name's Jason Hoyt. I'm an actor and television presenter. I've worked with Lee on many occasions in the past. You probably know me best as Rit Parker from the hit medical drama Narn Doctors. Incidentally, it's the only medical drama to be set in a suburban Indian restaurant. Lee was a work colleague and, in my opinion, a television pioneer. But above all else, he was my friend. So now I have two main objectives, to look into the mystery behind the mysteries and to locate the Mysterious Planet team. And secondly, to fill in the remaining 41 minutes that Lee left missing from this program. So join me on Lee Hart's Mysterious Planet, The Lost Episode. I have with me perhaps the sole surviving member of the Mysterious Planet team, voiceover artist Daryl Harbrack. And Daryl, thanks for joining us. Firstly, when did you first hear the tragic news? I was first alerted to the tragedy by my wife. She called me beside herself, absolutely, wondering if I had survived. I then had to explain to her in great detail that, in fact, I don't actually go on these trips. You see, what happens is they fax me scripts during the week, and I read those scripts into a microphone like this one. And then they put the pictures to words. Depending on the type of television series we're talking about, I mean, I have done shows in which they give me the pictures first and then I read, or I read first, and then the pictures are put to those words. It's, with a show, it was a little bit of both. And what was it that alluded you to the fact that there may be something wrong? Well, as on that Tuesday before, I had only received half a script. This half page here? Indeed. It's obviously the, uh, the jetty scene that we just watched earlier. Well, Jason, as you can imagine, this has been an incredibly surreal experience for me. People lose people. People lose associates. But, Jason, I truly have, have lost friends. When was the last time you saw them? I've never actually met them. No, but those scripts certainly did bring me closer to who they were. Daryl, 
Would you like to help me finish the rest of this episode? Jason, it would be an honor. Standard presenter Jason Hoyt is mounting a fresh lower budget investigation into why planes, ships, and most recently, the mysterious Planet documentary team have inexplicably gone missing in an area known as the Bermuda Triangle. So, what does he have to go on? This water-damaged camera was found floating near Bimini Island four days after the crew went missing. It's pretty exciting stuff because after the forensic tests, they've actually proven that this is the same waterproof housing that was used in the Loch Ness shoot. If the footage can be retrieved by the forensic labs, it may reveal vital clues about the crew's final moments. We have the footage from past episodes. Could there be some answers here? We have the chilling Mayday distress call. Jason knows that Lee is an inexperienced boaty and is familiar with Mayday distress call procedure, as seen in the pilot and only episode of Lee's fishing show, Screaming Reels. Roger, I'll copy that. You know, before I always go out, what I like to do is um, send out a Mayday, um, regardless of any trouble or anything like that. It's um, so just a good, safe thing to do, and if nothing goes wrong and, you know, all goes to plan, you can cancel it. It's common sense, really. And we will, of course, hear testimony from the man who circumcised AJ in episode two. <laughs> and we will hear from associates and friends. It's a shock. It's shocked us all. It shocked me, you. Didn't look like the sort of guy that would go missing. We know that the dock footage was shot predominantly on tape 38, but thanks to our research team, tapes 36 and 37 were also recovered which should presumably show us chronologically what the team were up to just days before their departure. The mysterious planets, huh? Well, New Zealand chapter. After weeks on the road, the team clearly decided to have a well-earned blowout. And this would also explain why steady cam cameraman Tom Walshman lacks the steadiness and coordination to stay on the jetty prior to the departure. This is not surprising, as on tape 37, he is last seen cavorting in this Miami fountain. I've scrolled through literally hours of tapes, and most of it seems to be poorly shot partying scenes in Miami, uh, specifically at a nightclub called Mango's. Now, I'm not sure how much of this material Lee was intending to use in this Bermuda episode, but I can only assume, being the professional that he was, that there's some footage which we're yet to locate. But in the meantime, let's remind ourselves what Mysterious Planet has already achieved in this series. Marshall Pichu, like any good documentary on the history of Lost and Treasure, our story must begin here. But ironically, the Spanish on their bloodthirsty lust for gold never actually made it. Look, zip it, will you? Just zip it. Don't play your fruity pan fruit tunes up here. Thank you. Thank you, Don. <laughs> then, out of nowhere from behind, a large upright walking hominid threw him to the ground, ripped his jeans off, and raped him. OK? He later found his jeans torn up to shreds in the manner that no human could do. A number of years later, he was up there once again, and again he was raped by the same beast. He was raped not once, not twice, but thrice over a four-year period. Yeah, we have had some problem with the, with the equipment. The uh, problem is it's sort of hypersensitive. It picks up all sorts of, uh, you know, your coins, buckles, belts, and, you know, anything metal. And uh, you know, even the static electricity and, and some of the fabric of the clothing, but um, I think we rectified that now. It's pretty exciting where um, we've got the composite aqua unit, the submersible camera, and the on the, on the aqua submersible mount. Now, it's time to put it in the water. Longtime friends and hosts of the Cryptid Factor radio show, journalist David Farrier and actor Reese Darby. Well, it's a shock. It's shocked us all. It's shocked me, you. We met Lee, we've had him on the show yeah, before. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. He seems fairly 
confident. Didn't look like the sort of guy that would go missing. Mm. And um, I remember when he said he was going to Bermuda, I thought, oh, well, if you're going to go missing, that's probably will be the, the place number one place happen. Yeah, that it would happen. Since he's gone missing, here in the studio, the phone's been off the hook. Uh, well, it's been on the hook. It's been mm. calling. Not this particular line. This is actually this is the prize line. But the, uh, the phone we have out in the, in the office, constantly, isn't it? Oh, is it yeah. Hello, where is he? Yeah. Hello, oh, what's happened to him? Hello, uh, hey, is that guy? No, he's not here. Hello, oh yeah, is this a price line? No, wrong phone. Yeah, you know, so um, we don't have an answer at the end of the day. No, we put it on answer phone, didn't we? Yeah, and just sent a message. Just sent a message from Buttons. What'd you yeah, say? So I, I just uh, said no, he's not here. We don't have him. If you're looking so, for him, yeah. yeah, look somewhere else. There's a phone there. You know, you hang on too long and then it's gone. Compass is going haywire. Aircraft control panels playing up. This apparently is a common occurrence in the Bermuda Triangle. But could this magnetic anomaly have occurred on the Seacross two 11 days ago? We can only speculate. But there is one thing we know, that for all these amazing strengths, a sense of direction was not one of them. We know in New Zealand that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Over here in the northern hemisphere, of course, it rises in the, in the west. west, east. It sits in the east, doesn't it? No, we can't rise in the east and set it. You can't go straight up and down. You can tell by the sun. I know, so, it's, so it would have come up over there, then it's going to set over there, which would make that north, that. Oh, actually, there's another way you can do it, is to find north is, um, uh, have you got a watch or something, Walsh? Yes, got an old hands watch like this, which can't be digital. Then you get like a rock, which I always carry, and give it a smash like that. A good, healthy hit. You break that little hand off. What you're gonna have to do now, you're gonna have to try and magnetize that with something cotton or uh, synthetic. Magnetize it. I pour a bit of water in the middle of my hand there, and that should float towards the direction of the north. And all we need to know now is the time of day. You got the, you know, we got. Oh, I've got a watch. Well, the key is you just gotta keep moving any direction, really. Is the mysterious planet T missing somewhere deep in the Bermuda Triangle? Or is there a simpler explanation? Many now believe that the team may have faked their own deaths, but if so, why? We know that the project had trouble with money from day one, so perhaps the mysterious planet T just ran out of it. But it's only available for one night. Yeah, yeah if, you could, if you could just see things through our shoes at the moment, it's not really ideal with the four of us in the one bed, if you know what I'm saying? And it's been a couple of days now. And we saw it again in the very first episode at Stonehenge. We had a, a coach load from Australia in yesterday. We couldn't get him out of here. Yeah, like I said, I've we been working here for 15 I... years, and everybody comes here. They're, they're, they're over the moon. I don't have a budget know? to research everything I do. These, these rocks come from 250 miles away. It's so historic, you know? Yeah, well, I think you've got to grow up. Just grow up, OK? The only mystery here is the fact that they've got building consent to build the damn thing, OK? If it was so damn good, they would have finished it, wouldn't they? Why not put that up there? I think you're wrong. Lee, perhaps unable to deliver the final costly episode, may have been looking for a way out. But is there any real evidence to suggest this occurred? Jason goes back to the footage of that final day on tape 38, using the same zooming technology that enhanced the Patterson Bigfoot film and the Shroud of Turin. The footage clearly shows American dollars packed into a waterproof camera case. Could this be what was left of the budget of this final episode? TVNZ accounts show clearly that the money was paid to the documentary team just seven days earlier, again in slow motion. And what do we really know about this man? Lee claims he is a marine biologist, but he doesn't really look like one. And he's an expert on the triangle and also zombies and stuff, uh, which is more like the, you know, the hey, voodoo stuff from Haiti. And why the rush to get Lee out onto the water? Come on, let's go though. Let's get out there, okay. I, for one, am not prepared to accept that Lee would fake his death purely for financial reasons. He took his work far too seriously, and his reputation and legacy meant everything to him. And how would you like to see um, Bigfoot, Bigfoot research going forward? Any changes? Well, naturally, a more scientific approach. If people would stop worrying about the fringe and would stop worrying about the trying to keep it a, the mystery instead of trying to find more answers. The shape of a pyramid is actually built on the fact of the vagine, as representative of the vagine or the vagine, um, or, the, or the Latin, the vagi, the vagi, or the womb of the woman, or like the shape of a vagina. Um, thoughts, thoughts on that? 
ايه عادل ساعات دي والراجل بيصور لا اي ثينك ات هاز سمثينج تو دو ويز ذا سان جاد هاز سمثينج تو دو ويز ذا سان جاد را سان جاد را اوكي سو نوت تو دو ويز ذا فاجينا نو ات هاز اولويز سمثينج تو دو ويز ذا سان جاد But then, drama. More evidence for the conspiracy theorists. This home movie footage was sent to TVNZ by the Clark Gimlin family, who were holidaying in Miami a week after the mysterious planet allegedly disappeared. Could they have inadvertently captured members of the team on film? This shot at a Miami resort clearly shows a man who bears remarkable similarities to Lee Hart. The labs do a forensic photographic comparison with a known photo of Lee. Are they one and the same person? Most matches can be made on seven or eight basic points. So what we've done is we've taken the Clark family footage and an existing photo of Lee. With those basic sort of seven, seven or eight points, we have a 98% match. Now, to be on the safe side with any test, you need a control. So we've brought in a third image, um, an unrelated image, in this case, uh, one of the actor Gary Busey. And even with him as a control, we come up with this 98% match. To Gary Busey? No, no, from the, the, the Clark family footage to the known photo, those two are a 98% match. But that's not with Gary Busey? Not Gary Busey. So out of the two there, which was the closest match to Gary Busey? Uh, well, no, that's not what we were looking for. The, the point is that the, the Clark family footage and the existing photo of Lee are a 98% match. To Gary Busey. Uh, I tell you what, let's just uh, take Gary Busey out of it. The the footage and the existing photo are a 98% match. Well, there you go. It's all fairly inconclusive. Uh, no, no. There's a there's a two percent chance that it's not the same person. So it's a two percent chance that it could be Gary Busey. And consider this nightclub footage seen in a recent episode of Wild on E. It clearly shows a man who has a remarkably similar dancing style to the missing producer, A.J. Johnson. Ironically, the footage is sent to the mysterious planet's own labs, where it will be analyzed by the forensic photography team and Candy Lane from Dancing with the Stars. Together, they will compare it with known footage of A.J. dancing drunk in the controversial Loch Ness episode. In this case, it's not a match. Mysterious planet traveled the world attempting to solve its greatest mysteries. The triangle boys suck you down. What about their legacy? They met the world's experts, believers, and skeptics, and their unorthodox approach touched people in a way few documentary teams have ever done before. I have met local people, unconnected with tourism, uh, who have had encounters with something powerful in the loch. Actually, I might just interrupt. It might be easy if I just come over there, I think. Adrian? Might be a little bit better. Yeah. Were the aliens in Roswell the same as the ones that you saw? The big heads and the eyes? Oh, yeah, yeah, some of them are, yeah. No genitalia? I didn't see it on the males, but I know it on the females because I've actually had intercourse with those females several times. Sorry? Yeah, they, they want my DNA because of my being able to control their ships So you, you, you had intercourse with the female? Yeah, several times, yes. Several times? Yes, before they let me go. In the one night? No, they kept me about a week. And that whole time you were having sex yeah. with aliens? Yeah, well, not all the time. Human does not have feces this large. And uh, the feces that we found that particular day was very fresh. This is not so fresh. The rectum is quite large on these creatures. Is it possible that it, it could be a human? Yes, it could be a human, but I never saw him walk into Walmart. That guy, <laughs> this was a big, okay. these feces are quite large, you know what I'm saying. It's incredible stuff. I remember once Lee telling me how proud he was of his achievements as a television maker, but he was also acutely aware of the toll that could take on his crew and the people that they interacted with. Normally, Lee would have been fully prepared and brought plenty of bottles of urine up from the city. While she gratefully consumes Lee's urine. The festivities escalate and young producer AJ soon becoming the center of attention. <laughs> A 
AJ's just been circumcised. The best technology, the best technology. Get a light, Graham. Get a light. You told me not to fall You told me it was only a two-day trip. God damn it, it was 60 years ago, and I can still see them bodies. I can still see them. It was nice meeting you as well. Hi, uh, Nicole. Hi. How's it going? Great. We're um, kind of staying here as well, back at the, the hotel up the road there, the, the Roswellian, and uh, I don't know what you're doing after this, but we've got a bit of a mini bar there, and it's, it's pretty well stocked. in <laughs> the jacuzzi and stuff, and maybe you want to come back and have a bit of a, a, bit of a party, but... Um... Um, it's 8.30 in the morning. Is it? Yeah. Uh... You're not where I come from. Oh. <laughs> News of the mysterious planet's disappearance has spread all over the world, so we thought we'd talk to some people that they've touched. Nicole, how did you feel when you'd heard the news? I was just absolutely devastated. I still am, and they are such a great group of guys. And, and did they keep in touch after the shoot? Well, we tried. Well, Lee tried. He tried to text me as much as he could, so I am just so disappointed. Well, clearly a very emotional Nicole. You won't find it on any official map, and you won't know when you've crossed the line. But according to some people, the Bermuda Triangle, or the Devil's Triangle, is a very real place. But what about the disappearance of the Mysterious Planet documentary team? Many believe that they may have faked their own deaths, or succumbed to a very real force called incompetence. Whoa. Kevin McConaughey, it's over. Uh, at this point, anyway, it's over 9,000 feet here. And uh, with the stills camera, you can often capture a moment, uh, a unique moment. What are we going to see on that journey? Well, it's going to be up and down here. We are going to see the Andean Condor. We are going to see the largest right in the whole world. These are the... But once, of course, this road opened up on the west side of the lock. Oh, He's more scared of us than we are of him. Got your headphones in there, Brent. Get the headphones out of there. She'll, he'll have a go. He's wrapped you on your feet now. Get him off, get him off, get him off. Get him off. Okay, now we can talk about him. Just see if we can get a tight shot. The snake attacks. Yes. Lee stuns it with a pan flute, then returns it to the river whence it came. As you see now, you can hold this for a second, please. But then, Ooh. drama. What is it? Are you mad, guy? We just found this here. How could you break it? Now, everybody out of this location, please. Out, out. Now, now. Lee and the There's team a, are exiled from the dig. It's not what you want to happen when you're making an Egyptian mystery special. Do you personally have a, a, a favorite moment in the Mysterious Planet series? I have to say that there was one particular episode, I believe it was Roswell, I said, drama almost 40 times, and for a voiceover artist, that is gold. But I think my all-time favorite episode was Loch Ness. You see, every once in a while, words and images meld. Lee, for lack of a better word, was genius, and it came together perfectly on that particular show. But then, drama. Just 45 minutes into the dredging, they have hooked something, something big. We've hooked up something pretty big. Could be log anything, we're not saying it's anything. We're just gonna keep pulling up until we can see what it is. Okay, what are we got? They haul it aboard. Oh, 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 shit. Sorry, guys. Just some cable. Cut it loose. Lee cuts the stray cable free, but then drama. He has cut the power to the southern and western sides of the lock. Let her rip, George! Um, a favorite moment from, from Lee's TV series oh. from the, what would you say? I mean, um. I, I, to be honest, I haven't, I haven't seen it. I've always got things on, so. 
At the forensic labs, they've been working around the clock on the waterlogged camera recovered off the coast of Bimini Island. Was any of the footage able to be retrieved? And if so, what will it reveal about the crew's final moments? The, the team, uh, myself, Ezra and, and Tony, uh, extracted the saltwater damaged componentry, the, the, the motherboard. Once that process was, was completed, we get to the really exciting part. Uh, what, we, what we then had to do in order to view the footage was to ghost it or mirror it, if you like, onto a working hard drive, which we could then plug in and, and watch the footage. Not this hard drive. Uh, unfortunately, it was put into dispatch, and we, uh, we're not sure where it is right now. Uh, Tony, is there any word on that drive that we? No. No. OK. Uh, Presenter Jason Hoyt is now searching through poorly labeled tapes shot prior to their departure in an effort to find something relevant to include in this documentary. Tape 29 has Jason baffled. Clearly that footage shows that Lee had every intention of doing a proper documentary on the Bermuda Triangle, and to a degree, I feel vindicated. Does the Bermuda Triangle even exist? The number of wrecks in the area is not extraordinary given its size and the amount of traffic it receives. To many, the Bermuda Triangle will remain a mystery, as will the whereabouts of the documentary team originally paid to investigate it. Jason's journey has come to an end. What has he achieved? Well, it's been an emotional journey. I can't help but wonder what Lee would have made of the Bermuda Triangle had he had the opportunity of making a documentary on it. As for the disappearance of the Mysterious Planet team, perhaps their disappearance was for financial reasons. If that was the case, then Lee would have demonstrated that in a sense, a triangle or vortex did exist within their operation. A financial Bermuda Triangle, if you will, which may have led to them taking such dramatic action. So wherever they are now, and whatever they're doing, I believe they have good reasons for being there. Jesus, it's great you got my time at the moment, or? Nah. Oh, 